In this example, we're going to find the area between the graphs of two different functions. Uh, in this case, a line, y equals x squared, and a parabola, y equals x cubed. As usual, we're going to start with a graph in order to see what this looks like. If we sketch both of these functions, we have a parabola and a straight line. Uh, they intersect at two points. And we need to figure out what those points are, what the x values are for those points. Um, once we do that, in order to find the area between these curves, which is right here, you can think of it as the area underneath the line minus the area underneath the parabola. So it's as if we're going to calculate all of the area underneath the line and then subtract this part away. Let's start by figuring out where these two graphs cross each other. So if they cross each other, then for a given x value, the y values are the same, right? If we plug in this x value, whatever it is, the two graphs give you the, give you the same y value. So whatever the y value is here has to be the same as the y value in the other equation, and that means I can substitute. I can plug this x in wherever I see a y in the other equation and I end up trying to solve x equals x squared. Uh, one way to do this would be to move all the x's to one side and then factor. You also could have solved this equation using the quadratic for formula instead, but I like factoring whenever it's possible because it's usually faster. Um, when you're multiplying these two things together and getting zero, that tells you one of them has to be zero. So either x is zero or x minus one is zero. Uh, so x is zero or x is one. Those are the two values of x where these graphs cross each other. All right, now we're ready to calculate the area. We want to calculate the area under the line. So that would be a definite integral from zero to one of the function x minus the area under the parabola. Now we could calculate that as a separate integral, or it turns out we could pull it into this integral and calculate these together at the same time. So let's find an antiderivative in order to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. A function whose derivative is x would be x squared over two, and a function whose derivative is x squared would be x cubed over three. And you should check that this is correct. Pause the video if you need to, to take the derivative of x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 and make sure you get this integrand we started with, x minus x squared. Once you know that this is an antiderivative, we can plug in the endpoints. So we're going to get 1 squared over 2 minus 1 cubed over 3 minus 0 squared over 2 minus 0 cubed over 3 and the total there is one-sixth. So the area between the curves is one-sixth. In general, this is what you have to do in this kind of question. Uh, in order to find the area between two curves, you're going to want to know where they intersect because those will become your limits of integration. And then you want to integrate the difference of the two functions the one that's on top minus the one that's on bottom. And for that, it's really a good idea to make sure you have a graph of the two functions so that you can see which one is on top. The common mistake in this question would be to assume that when you square something, it's bigger, and therefore the x squared is on top. But we can see from this graph that that's not the case here, because what's between these curves occurs when x is less than 1, between 0 and 1. And it turns out if you square a number that's between 0 and 1, it gets even smaller. Then that's why x squared is below x, at least on this interval where we care.